Hello, hello. Welcome to the Skeins of Dreams Knitting Podcast. I'm Megha. I'm also known as Skeins of Dreams on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I usually come here to talk all about my knitting and making journey with all of you. Today I have a lot of knitting. <laughs> uh, creative um, pursuits in April have been very um, strong, I would say. <laughs> I have been knitting away. I've also been sewing a bit and uh, in general just crafting. I'm doing my paint by numbers project as well so I can maybe give a quick update on that. Um, it's quite gloomy here. I'm hoping the light is sufficient for me to get through this video uh, but we'll see. My Peperomia has joined us again. I think she needs a little bit of water but uh, she'll be fine. I have named her Melanie. <laughs> Pun fully intended. Uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, it's, I always start off practicing my intro and then like, uh, deciding how to transition into the knitting, um, smoothly. But if you've, but if you're a podcaster or you've, you've tried to record any videos, it always becomes like super awkward. So anyway, I'm going to jump right into my finished objects. I have one finished object today. Uh, I had just about started this the last time I was here recording an episode. And that this is my Venetian tank. It's a, a pattern by Sari Nordland. Um, and I have finished it. Uh, it's a very basic tank knit in, knitting for olive pure silk held double and that's what I have done as well uh, I use the plum rose color this has sort of become like my neutral uh, <laughs> I have a lot of um, garments in like this vintage pink color I'm almost getting bored of it now I think I need to move on to other types of pink um, it has a keyhole back uh, feature and I've put this cute little button uh, on the back uh this was a breeze to knit i don't have a lot to say about it like it's a lovely pattern sari's patterns are really easy to follow it has a i-cord neckline and then it has a twisted drip it's a bottom up design i'm gonna put a picture of me wearing it for instagram I didn't wear it today because it's uh, it's still a little chilly so I needed sleeves and <laughs> so yeah but I finished it and as soon as I finished it the weather became a little too cool for wearing a sleeveless top so I haven't been able to knit it or um, to wear it next time even though I'd been quite careful next time I would make the armhole tiny bit smaller or shorter for myself but other than that um, I'm very very pleased with this um, tank and I, I was looking for a basic tank design for this summer and I'm so glad that I've um, got this done um, yeah other um, I don't think there's anything else to say about it like I'm super happy with it the knitting for olive pure silk is a pleasure to work with and holding it double gives a really nice um, fabric um, I have mentioned this before I like my summer ga garments to not be too see-through so that I can just wear them over a bra I don't always like layering in the summer so I would rather not have anything that needs a camisole under it so talking about summer garments I'm wearing my tankar tea by my friend Anina Yuti uh, she she has the Ani Yuti Knits podcast on YouTube a uh, very prolific designer i'm going to talk a little about more about anina um shortly when i talk about my future plans uh but yeah it's it's i knit this in 100% cotton by Ta by taki yarns coronado i think i'm not particularly um happy with the yarn choice um it does it has started looking a little like worn out already like i've worn it a few times but i just made it last year i would like my knits to stay a little more fresh <laughs> for a longer 
uh, duration um, it has started looking a little worn now thankfully I used a darker color so it is not too bad but I the, just the way it looks the fabric and the yarn it has started like not pilling exactly but like get, getting this feel like old garments do I don't know if I can stand up and try and show you how it has started looking I mean you have to look at it really close leave for you to see that so i don't know if this is too much close up but yeah it's i can't explain it hopefully um i was able to show you how it looks now but if not i might have edited it out uh, of course when i'm recording the cats will go crazy but i know you like watching the cats in the background um oreo sleeps here most of the time and for my podcasting i came and sat here so he has been evicted from his current this has become his bed now i don't know why but he sleeps on this on the back of the couch and then the, on this um cushion here <laughs> that is that is this is his latest spot so i've kind of stolen his spot from him all right uh so that was my finished object and what i'm wearing today um let's start with the whip parade i have a lot of whips and i have no idea where to begin all right let me start with um uh, my apoplistra so i had shown this the last time that i don't remember how much i have no i have no memory of what i said or what i did last episode but uh one of my uh goals for this year was to my major goal for knitting this year is to s try different designers and one of the designers i really really uh appreciate and like uh, like she she does beautiful work is rachel who is the unwind knitwear unwind knitwear is that her handle yes rachel released this beautiful pattern called a pop listra it's a three color all over color work sweater and this is how much i've done um i have thoroughly been enjoying this though in the last week or so i haven't really knit on this because other things have started taking precedence over this but i'm so happy with my color choices and with how this is looking this is definitely going to be an epic um statement piece i want to say so three color color work and a lot of rows do have three stranded color work and this is how it looks in the back i have actually like steam blocked this to take a picture for instagram and um i'm super pleased with the with my tension as soon as i had steam blocked it it looked it still looked little odd to me but once i let it dry it looked really beautiful um i'm i'm pretty pleased with it then if i were to you know this these two colors this pink and mint don't have too much contrast a lot of the projects on ravelry have three colors with all of the three colors having a high contrast between them i usually go for high, higher contrast than this but i think i'm thoroughly enjoying the low contrast look i'm super super happy with how this is turning out my yarns this is um i think this is naughty pine fiber company uh the colorway is called peach pumpkin this is uh, needles at the ready yarn and uh, the colorway is called new growth i think this is on their bfl4 ply and if you watch the episode bef l last episode this is vale street yarn um mel uh, of the mel make stuff podcast dyed this yarn but she doesn't dye anymore and i had uh, got pretty much taken this yarn from her in a yarn swap <laughs> so these are my three colors and uh i'm very happy with how the apoplistra is working up 
it, I can't work on it too much. It is a high attention um, knit. So I do like a few rows at a time and then I just like start working on something else. But super pleased with it. It's going, this is going to be one of those things that you're going to see a few times on the um, podcast. And I have dropped a lot of stitches. Oh no. I got the stitches back on the needles. I think I need uh, I need needle stoppers or something for this project because with the three color color work, if I start dropping stitches, it's going to be a nightmare. But yep, that was my first work in progress, uh, the Apoplistra. My next work in progress is the Pohyola sweater. So this is a design by Sari Nordland again. Uh, my friend Casey of from the Young Folk Knits podcast is holding a Pohyola Cal or Pohyola Knit Along along with Sari. Um, this also, for some re reason, suddenly I've done two, two, I'm doing, working on two different sweaters and both of them have a three color color work, three stranded knitting. I don't know what happened, but it seemed to be in the stars for me. <laughs> uh hold on there's just a lot going on here okay so this is what my pohyola looks like i am knitting this in drops nord i think it's an alpaca and wool blend yarn uh the con this this color is a dark gray mix the green is a I think it's called an olive green mix. It's color 10. I don't know what the name is. And then there is a rust mix. So these are the, um, this is my main color. Um, the, the, this charcoal was contrast color one. And actually when I had started the sweater, I had thought of doing this as my main color. And then I kind of lost, I kind of lost steam on the sweater. I had started with the green being my second contrast color. It was supposed to be only in the yoke. And I couldn't understand why I lost steam on the sweater. And then suddenly I was like, I want to knit a bright colored sweater. And then this rust was becoming one of those vintage pink things for me. And I was just losing interest in so much of this vintage dull pink. So I wasn't feeling it. And then around this row here somewhere here I decided to change my mind and or I changed my mind and I decided to change the colors and I changed the color scheme over here to make the pink my uh, second contrast color and made green my primary color and I am so happy with that because I think this will be a very very nice sweater in my wardrobe and this green is just so bright and so nice to knit with. I'm feeling all the greens right now so I'm super happy that I changed my mind and I made green my contra my primary color and on cue I am dropping stitches on this as well. Um, I'm not very like organized today i don't know what's happening but my knitting is just falling off all the needles but this is my pohyola sweater and i'm super super pleased with how it's turning out i was kind of in a hurry to finish the color work and move on to just plain stockinette and in that process i worked quite a bit on the yoke and gave myself some repetitive strain so i have been unable to knit on the sweater more than a few rows at a time i don't know how it works but this particular sweater gives me pain in my left hand but if i'm knitting on something else i don't get the same pain because i think just the changing the needles or the weight of the yarn is using a little a different muscle or whatever um, or diff my hand is moving differently so I'm not getting any pain but this one is going slow now since I finished the yoke because it's giving me repetitive strain but I really don't want to let it go 
on this side and like i don't want to abandon it because if i do then it's never gonna get done it's a sweater being knit on two and a half us two and a half needles which is a small needle size and i don't want to let it go so i'm knitting it a little bit at a time but i am so happy with the yoke the yarn is so soft i am so so pleased with uh, my choices here but yeah so that has been the uh, progress on my pohiola sweater all right so that is whip number two um then there are just so many whips right now okay so i i had and i again don't remember how much of this i had done last time um I decided to knit uh, another Kerr sweater for Baljeet. Uh, Kerr is a pattern by Rebecca Klo. Baljeet already has a golden and white or a bronze and white Kerr. And I decided that he needs a plain Kerr because the shape of the sweater suits him really well. So I cast on another Kerr in this beautiful burnt orange color. This is Cascade 220. Um, and the color is ginger and i just joined in the round yesterday um i have been knitting on this quite slowly but i joined in the round yesterday and now it's just stocking net for 14 inches or not stocking net for 14 but like stocking net for 12 and then ribbing for two inches so there is a long way to go on this um but this has this is one of my you know um relaxed tv knitting kind of a project so um i did make some progress but not too much to show here i love rebecca's patterns and the curve is especially very flattering um it's you cast it on you cast on the back around the neckline you do some increases to form the shoulder and then you knit flat until the underarm at the back and then you pick up stitches for the front so hold on so this is my pickup line you pick up stitches for the front um you knit each of the fronts separately until you join here for the neckline and then you knit the front flat until the underarm and for changing the sweater to fit a male body all you have to make sure is that this armhole is sufficiently long for the person because they have a bigger shoulder uh, or like men have a bigger shoulder um depth than women do um for the same bust or chest measurement i would say typically of course it changes on who you're knitting for but that's all i had to do i, ha I have a lot of notes for this on my ravelry page for the first skirt that i knit and i'm just following the same instructions um the only modification like i said is to knit the depth the armhole depth to be longer to fit the person you're knitting it for and that's all i'm doing and i'm just going to skip the color work and knit a plain curl sweater so that is another whip uh did i lose stitches on this no i didn't thankfully <laughs> all right my next work in progress is also in this bag um i cast on another self-drafted raglan tea so i have become like this self-drafted raglan person um i had knit one in orange last year which fits me really well i love i love wearing that linen tea um that was also in a chain at linen and i decided i needed another one so i cast on another uh, linen tea right now I have not I'm going to lose all the stitches on all my whips today it's ridiculous uh, I haven't split for sleeves it's still going in the yoke so I decided this this raglan needs yarn over increases um, so I've started doing that this is a beautiful sagey green colorway I'm all green <laughs> today um, this yarn is deep stash it's quince and co 
Kestrel, it's a chain at linen. An iron weight is what they say this is. Um, I am getting a 20 stitch gauge on US 5 needles on this. I wanted a fairly opaque fabric. I think this is going to be fine if I wear it on my skin, like you can't really see anything behind it. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to say about this. I have notes on Ravelry on how many stitches I cast on. I usually prefer a narrower sleeve on the top and I do more stitches for the for the back. I do a few for the sleeves. For example, this one I did 44. I knew my gauge would be around 20 stitches for this. And my gauge was 20 stitches for my orange tee from last year as well. That was a different linen yarn though. So I cast on like 44 stitches for the back, six for each sleeve and two for each front. I do a flat cast on. I work back and forth, do the raglan increases. And then after a, after about eight sets of increases, I join it in the front by casting on um, a certain number of stitches to so that the front becomes equal to the back. And then I join in the round and I, I do the yoke. So I prefer the, uh, the narrower shoulder at the top. And then I do this increases required to reach my bust measurement. Like I do a 47 inch for the bust. My bust, my actual bust is like 45, 45 and a half. Uh, I'm aiming for a 47 inch finished garment on this one so um i'm going to knit until i have 40 i have enough for that and then my arm is 16 inches i decide how many i have to cast on under the arm and i kind of manipulate the number of raglan increases versus the underarm stitch cast on to make sure that it fits me um it's kind of a recipe i have i know the numbers for my own size and my Ravelry project page is usually updated with all of that information. So if you want to see, you can take a look at that. If you have any specific questions, I can answer that as well. Um, someone had a, a while ago asked me if I have like any videos or something for a self-drafted raglan. I don't really. What I suggest usually is that if you have a sweater that you like, if you've knit a sweater that you like from a different for a for like, you know, previously or something, you can use the cast on stitches for that, like to figure out what is the width of the neck that you prefer. And there are so many basic raglan tea pa like options out there. Um, Rebecca has the Tolster tea or the Tolsters. I mean, Tolster tea pattern. There is the Lento sweater. Then I know Ivana from the Republic of Me podcast has a um, in and out raglan pattern. Ivana's pattern is a little different. It has a wider shoulder cast on like you do like if you say if say you have 20 stitches for the front and 20 stitches for the back, your each each sleeve would be 10 stitches. Um, so the sleeve stitch count is half of your front or half of your back but i do even smaller than that because i cast on 44 for the back and only six for the sleeve so i just prefer that type of a raglan but nothing against the other kinds i've just found that this one fits me a little better uh just because it doesn't you know if the raglan is too much over here for me it kind of it with my wide chest like it doesn't work so if the raglan is closer here that is if i have a narrower sleeve then it goes down the right way for me just because i feel that that fits me or looks better on me so that's what i've done for my raglan tea um yeah let me know if you have any other questions there's a lot of basic raglans like i mentioned and if you change your gauge a little um or if your gauge is different from what the pattern is mentioning you can definitely tweak and there is a knitting math video that i already have and i can link it somewhere if you're new and you've not seen that and if you'd like to uh, get an idea about how i change gauge on patterns uh, that is something you could check out um other than that i'm thoroughly enjoying my linen tea 
and it's it's been fun to knit this and we have been um blessed by a cat visit today hi oreo hello <laughs> this is like i said his spot so he has come to claim it uh if i don't get up from his spot he's going to sit on me and that's fine with me uh this is how it usually goes Oreo and Mango have a vet appointment next Monday and it's going to be an ordeal because Oreo does not like um, car rides. He gets very annoyed with all the vibration and we have a vet who's super close by to our current house. We took the cats there last year and the vet tech who was trying to give them rabies shots I think she was like brand new or whatever. She had not done it too many times before. She poked mango like five or six times before she was able to give him a rabies shot properly. And mango was being very patient. He was being very patient. Like she would like poke him and then try to give the shot. But the, the fluid went everywhere. It was not going into his skin. I don't know how, I don't know what was happening. Mango lost his patience, eventually turned around and swat her on her face. Um, I did not reprimand him for that. I was pretty happy with his reaction because I was getting irritated myself. Uh, <laughs> I know that's a mean thing to say. But anyway, we decided we don't want to go back there. So we're going to a place that's farther away and that's a 20 minute drive. Uh, one of our friends recommended, but Oreo does not like um, car ride, so that'll be fun. Do you want to go on a car ride, Oreo? <laughs> Oreo has completely derailed my thought process. I have two more whips. I have too many projects going on. Oops, as you can see. All right. So um, another whip I want to talk about is my half and half triangles wrap. Um, I am knitting my second half and half triangles wrap and this one has been going on for years now. Uh, I have suddenly got the interest to pick this back up so I've been knitting on it quite a bit recently. I think I'm quite close to getting it done as in if I work on this a few more weeks I think I should be able to finish it. I don't knit on it over the weekdays usually, but weekends I get a chance to knit on it for sure. I'm knitting on the second half. I got kind of tired of doing stripes, so I started doing the plain color. I also want to finish this yarn and I was afraid that if I kept going with the stripes, I wouldn't actually finish and I'll have a little leftover of this pink yarn. All right. Um, all you had to leave so i had to pause the video <laughs> so anyway so i am working on this pink color now and once i finish the yarn where is it once i finish this ball of yarn i'll pick up the gray again and then i'll start knitting with the gray so the first half is this light pink and this chart rosy color striped and you can see the stripe here and the second is this gray and then the bright rhubarb pink. So the, the three colors here, the light pink chartreuse and this gray are Pearl Soho Quads, which is an alpaca based yarn. And this hot bright pink is actually linen quill, Pearl Soho linen quill in rhubarb. These three colors um, the three quads colors were gifted to me by Pearl Soho and then this bright pink is something I had bought myself. I just decided that I want to make um, half and half wrap and I didn't have a sixth skein so I decided to add this and I'm super pleased with how the two um, halves have a different... My, my t-shirt is all over the place <laughs> i'm super pleased with how the two halves have a different vibe to them like this is very punchy and bold and this one is very soft and like um 
muddled or muddy or whatever so um i'm about 65 sti rows away from finishing like i only have these many stitches to incorporate they are i would i mean they are the longer rows so um it will take me a little bit of time but i'm making good progress i want to say so it should be done in the next few weeks hopefully sometime this year anyway <laughs> so that is my half and half triangles wrap uh it's i i'm since i've started knitting the half and half triangles wraps i've really enjoyed having a garter project on the go at all times like anytime i feel like there's something happening in my life or the my mood or i just i'm just watching tv and i can't focus on my knitting it's just nice to have a garter project always in the background and i'm already planning that as soon as i finish this i'm going to start another one um even if it takes me 2 years 3 years whatever i just want um a simple garter project on the go at all times uh we use the i've made the half and half triangles wrap before and we use that a lot it's just being used as a throw on the couch so i think that this one is going to have the same <laughs> same uh destiny basically uh so yeah so that was that and i have another very uh fun whip to share with you so laura penrose came out with this pattern called the sweet shop blanket which is basically um you know just a just multiple squares uh but you don't have to do any seaming because you pick up stitches for the next square and i started sort of a scrappy sweet shop blanket uh what i basically did was pulled out all the yarn from my stash which was pink purple or peachy and i divided them into lights and darks and i just cast on this was the first block i did and i just cast on and i have been working away at this i had this has been so much fun to knit like the little squares take you about i think each square takes me about 90 minutes this is fingering hell double so all of these are basically sock skeins in my stash they're either leftovers from other projects their minis or their sock skeins i've purchased and they can i don't see them becoming socks um in the near future so i decided that i'm going to make them into a blanket and i'm so so pleased with how this is going i've right now done 11 squares my plan is to make like 100 squares total so this will take me a while i've already started my 12th square and i'm in the middle of i've just about started it that's the color it's going to be so this is a mini i've ha i have from i don't know from when this is such a i love this square this is my favorite one so far uh, but of course i like all of them and um they'll all uh, go into the blanket and that'll that's what will make the blanket special uh so it's kind of a scrappy but not so much it's more like random skeins from my stash are being used into this um i'm using about 13 grams per half so 13 grams per color per um section and i've calculated that i would need 2600 yards for 100 squares so that means i need 26 skeins 13 dark and 13 light to finish this blanket i'm not sure if i have those many pink purple and peachy skeins but we'll see as we as the blanket grows in size we'll see if i actually need 100 or if i can get away with like 80 or something but i'm super pleased with how this is turning out and i'm thoroughly thoroughly enjoying knitting this sweet shop blanket um i'm being very loose with what i mean by pink if it has even a hint of pink it's going into this blanket <laughs> just because otherwise if i stick 
through to pink and everything i'm not gonna have enough yarn from stash to do this i am looking forward to using up it's kind of a reset of my stash if i use up all of these random skins i don't really know what to do with i mean i bought them for socks but let's be honest how many socks do i actually make i don't make a lot of socks in a year this square i finished just this morning i have been knitting on this blanket with my morning coffee pretty much um so this is the square i did this morning um i don't get to finish it because it takes me about 90 minutes for each square uh so i don't get to finish one square in the morning but today being um a week like um friday i and i for some reason woke up at 5 30 today so i've been so i had more time this morning with my coffee so i was able to finish a square I'm aiming at like, I'm not being too crazy about it. I'm doing one square a day or not even. I Some days I've not done a square at all, but I just want to keep going at it. Just like my half and half wrap, just keep going with it so that it gets done uh, sooner rather than later, but I'm not putting any sort of pressure on me. But I think just because it's such a scrappy project and you wanna see what the next color combination will look like or something like that, it just keeps you going and has uh, a lot of a cons constant interest or whatever. So, so yeah, so that is my, I think the last whip I have to share for today. Uh, I have been knitting away like, I, I get bored of one thing and I start another and then I get bored of that I start another I've been shamelessly knitting shamelessly casting on whatever I feel like and I'm just it it's it's making me happy and I'm I'm okay with that I don't need to be finishing anything I don't have a lack of clothes <laughs> I don't need my uh, knitting objects to get done this minute so I'm just letting myself enjoy the process and I've I've uh, it's kept me going and kept me happy so far so <laughs> I did go through a monogamous project phase for a while so when I was in that phase I was doing that but right now I'm not in that mindset at all I'm just casting on whatever comes to my mind and I have two more cast on plans actually three but i'll talk about two today and the third one you can see the next time i podcast so um next cast ons uh irene lynn of course everyone knows irene lynn comes out with such beautiful designs constantly she has this pattern i think it came out recently um it's called the shona top it's this beautiful lacy summer design and I'm gonna put a picture of it on the screen here. And I want to cast it on in this hot pink, sort of, but like dark hot pink. This is Summer Solstice by Juniper Moon Farm Yarn. Uh, it's 48% linen, 24% cotton, 24% viscose, and 4% polyester. Um, it's this beautifully speckled, tweedy looking thing and i really want to cast on the shona top using this color i also have a baby blanket planned uh, one of my friends recently told me that she's pregnant and anina came out with the beautiful zigzag zen blanket pattern if you haven't already seen the pattern go check it out right now i'm gonna put a picture of it on the screen and the link is in the description box below so when my friend said that she's pregnant and of course, the same week, Anina um, came out with this, released this zigzag zen blanket pattern. I decided I needed to make it. And I decided I needed new yarn for it because my friend is having a boy and I have a lot of pinks in stash. And then all of the pinks are now uh, reserved for my sweet shop blanket. I'm just giving more excuses to myself. And anyway, I needed like something super wash so I can actually give a washable blanket to my friend because let's be honest, um, cannot give something that is not washable for a child, for a baby that's not born yet. So these are the colors I picked. I am so, so pleased with it. They're just like going with everything right now. Like this is such a summery, springy, um, color palette this is cascade 220 superwash 
the that's just I think it's ecru. This is daisy yellow. This is hyacinth, and then this is I don't remember what green it is. Uh, the color is 802 for this green, but um, I'm looking forward to making a zigzag zen blanket out of these colors. They'll be so, so fun. The baby is due like in October, uh, so I, it's not like I have to make it now, but I might just cast it on now. Like, why not? Like, get it done. And then if she has like a baby shower or something, I will be ready with a gift. If not, uh, I will give it to her when I see fit <laughs> uh, but yeah those are my those are the projects that are exciting me for um the next few cast ons i think um other than that i think i have one sewing whip to share with all of you uh you enjoyed watching me um share my previous sewing whip so i'm gonna uh, make it a point to also show you some sewing projects just at the end i won't talk too much about it i'm gonna do a sewing roundup at some point but that will be a whole separate video but today i'll just share the current thing that i'm working on so uh one pattern that i've always wanted to try the sewing pattern is called the nyx dress and blouse um i've seen a lot of versions of this and i've always wanted to sew one um at least the blouse for myself uh so i have been working away on that uh, this is the view c it's a v neck i'm st i'm yet to attach the sleeves they'll have full length kind of cinched in with a uh, elastic at the end sleeves i've prepped the sleeves and everything i just have to do the elastic the cuff the sleeve cuff and then set the sleeve into the blouse um this is art gallery fabrics i've had this in my stash for for a while this is a viscose or a rayon is it rayon one of those um are they the same i don't remember but they have a it has a gathered front bodice um the back is also a yoke so that's the yoke and then i've gathered the back it's a busy print and so maybe the details are not all visible i i use that on purpose so that it being the first time i'm making this blouse if there are any mistakes i want it to be hidden in the flowiness of the fabric and the busyness of the pattern uh, <laughs> my v-neck was a little shady but i think uh you can't really tell from a distance that is the um thing with sewing i get worked up about little details but then when i'm wearing it i realize that no one can actually see it uh, i'm really pleased with how it's working up so far i finished hemming the bottom i didn't press the bottom yet it's a high low hem uh, but i'm so so happy with this the instructions for this pattern were a little shady i want to say for a beginner but if you know what you're doing it shouldn't be an issue i'm kind of a semi beginner i'm i have made a few patterns but i still i have not made enough that i just know what to do after cutting the fabric like you know i still need to look at stuff um but yeah, that's what I'm sewing currently. I want a lot, a lot more office going or office wear, um, office wear basically. Um, so I am trying to make more garments like that. I don't want to buy any, so I have a lot of fabric. So I've been trying to experiment with different patterns, see what works. If this looks nice, I'm gonna make another version in like a plain fabric so that will my my stitches will show more um clearly in that uh, this one is a little bit more hidden so um yeah so that's what i'm working on this is the next blouse like i mentioned and i've been i've not i'm not very confident sewing with rayon this is the first time i was able to use a rotary cutter to actually cut the fabric but i think it i i think i did a good decent enough job I'm excited to um, up my sewing skills, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so that is one of the other crafty projects that I've been working on. Okay, so I've definitely lost light and I had to go do something else. So I got interrupted. <laughs> 
Uh, but the last kind of work in progress that I want to share today is my paint by numbers kit. So I had spoken about this maybe two episodes ago when I received it. Um, this is a painting of more plants. Basically, Melanie is getting some new friends. Uh, I have been thoroughly enjoying working on this. This is such a good break for my hands as well from all the knitting and the sewing and all of that. Um, it's It's been fun. Uh, the lighter colors do need second coats to hide like the lines and everything. But I think from a distance, you might not even be able to tell the lines and all of these. Uh, but yeah, I've thoroughly been enjoying working on this. Uh, this will take me a while, but it's it's happening. I know a lot. some of you were interested in seeing my progress with my paint by numbers kit. So I thought I would include a little bit about that here. Um, I was quite surprised that I was definitely living under a rock and so many of you already know about paint by numbers and everything. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I just, it feels very cathartic, like, you know, I'm just following, I, I'm not thinking, it tells me which number and I'm just like using that color, so um, initially I was like, what is, is this not going to work out well or something like that, but as I started doing more of it, it started becoming a bit clearer to me where this was headed, of course. Um, yep, so that was pretty much all the crafty things that I had to talk about today. Uh, I have a lot of things planned. I have, I'm so excited about so many other projects. <laughs> it's going to be a fun um, spring, summer, I wanna say. Next month, actually, um, I'm going to Knit City, Toronto and meeting with Salma and Mel once again. So that is, I think this, is it the 17th and the, it's the 18th and 19th of May or something like that. And I'm going to drive up to Toronto, meet up with Mel and Selma. We have already booked our tickets for it and we've booked the Airbnb where we'll be staying at. So um, our annual tradition of going to one knitting festival together is continuing and I'm super, super excited about it. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to again being in the presence of all the yarn and the <laughs> I really enjoyed Knit City Montreal. It's a very different vibe from the farmy knitting festivals, uh, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed looking at all the yarn in person. So I'm, I'm quite um, happy that I'm going. And yeah, um, I also have some work trips planned next month. So I don't know what my podcasting schedule will look like, but I'll definitely try to get some footage as usual at Net City Toronto, and then I will record a podcast once I'm back from there. Uh, hopefully, I would have finished at least one thing by then. Not that anyone's counting, but it would be good to keep things moving on my needles and not just keep casting on stuff, right? <laughs> um, but yeah. Thank you so much if you've stuck around until the end. I hope you enjoyed my 50th episode. I did not do anything too special, but it's just me and just my knitting as usual. Uh, thank you so much for always supporting me and leaving such wonderful messages on my videos. Um, I thoroughly enjoy interacting with all of you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe, uh, happy crafting, and see you next time. Bye. What happened? Did I take your seat? Are you happy now? Are you happy?